Now, it's sometimes said that the way I teach maths is a little bit different or a bit unusual. Well, today is probably the most unusual of them all. Um, we're going to explore measures, this is the first lesson in that, and, and we're going to do this in very different ways. Um, we're going to think about what was it like before measurement systems were invented, um, come up with your own measurement system, so I'm uh, really, really looking forward to that. Now actually the start of the video is very similar to what the year three and four children will do, and then what we'll do is we'll think really deeply about why certain kinds of measurement system w systems work, what's really great about our measurement system in particular. And that will really get you thinking deeply and again, really practical task. Most of today's task is actually on the video. There is a little extens extension that you might get to at the end, uh, but we're gonna, get, we're gonna get right into it. Now, I have to start today's video with a little apology to Noah because I'd said to Noah, oh, I'd love to include your question uh, next week. I saved his work and then I didn't actually find it when it came to put the videos together. But anyway, let's have a look at this one from Noah. So um, we have this uh, recipe here and Noah wants to make 105 flapjacks. We've got the amount of ingredients that he has here. And then this really made me laugh because it, uh, it reminded me of me. He realises he does not have enough ingredients, so he phones his wife. How much of each ingredient does he need? Um, well, now again, brilliant question here. It made me laugh, because isn't it good having a supportive spouse um, when you forget things? And Noah even included the answers that were there. We're not going to stop and look at this one for now, but well done, Noah, and thank you so much for sending it through. Also, I have to say, this question from Daisy was brilliantly, brilliantly thought out. And we'll have a little pause on this one. So Daisy went for, uh, Daisy has 510 grams of butter, 601 grams of sugar, 450 grams of flour and 13 eggs. How many cupcakes can she make based on this same recipe? Um, now have a look, in, in the answers that Daisy gave, she had how many cupcakes and she also included which ingredient will run out of first. Now, pause the video. Which ingredient will we run out of first and how do you know? Well, I wonder if you found it. Actually, the ingredient we'll run out of first is flour. Because if you have a look at the flour, 450 grams of flour um, is actually less than, less than double. Um, whereas the other examples we have are more than double. So it's flour that will run out of first. So we just need to look at the flour, 450 grams of flour. Um, so that is this recipe plus 50% more because uh, 150 is 50% uh, is more than 300. So how many cupcakes will I be able to make? Um, so it's this recipe plus 50% more. And I love the way that Daisy wrote this answer. It will be exactly 37 cu cupcakes. You'd have enough ingredients for 37 and a half cupcakes. So how many cupcakes can you make in total? 37. Well, that ties together a lot of the skills from last week. That was a brilliant question. And Daisy, I'm so sorry for missing it. I hope it helps that we've, uh, we've had a look at it there. Now we're going to go on today to inventing measures and coming up with your own measurement system and really understanding some of the big ideas behind measures. It's going to be really active, it's going to be really thought-provoking, and at the end we're really going to try and deepen the thinking. Now, we're going to finish by me asking you this. The metric system is good because. What makes our metric system great? To really understand that, we're going to explore other kinds of number systems. So we're going to do that first. Let me just explain this. Um, if you think about the height of a giraffe, the distance from where I live to Paris, and then the thickness of a, a piece of thread, measured in metres, they are as follows. A giraffe about 4.6 metres tall. From here, from where I live, when I say here to Paris, um, 600,000 metres. And this piece of thread, 0 0.00007 metres thick. Now, in the case of the giraffe, that's like an, a metre is an appropriate unit to measure a giraffe in. I can understand about how big 4.6 metres is, and I can measure that. Now, when we have 600,000 metres, it's very difficult to picture, because that's such a large number, how much that actually is. So in that case, it's better really measured in kilometres, 600 kilometres. It's easier for me to picture how far that is. 
Now, of course, imagine trying to measure the thickness of, of this of, of this with uh, with a metre stick. That would be impossible. So instead, um, I would think of that, that in, in millimetres, and even millimetres would be difficult to measure in, 0 0.07 millimetres. But there, at least with that, this uh, measurement, millimetres, is much more appropriate for the thickness of a piece of, of thread than metres is. Now, imagine a time before our metric system, and that did exist. We haven't always had metres and centimetres and millimetres that everyone can understand how long they are, right? like a standard method of measuring. And before there were standard me uh, methods for measurement, uh, people would often measure using body parts like hands or a cubit, which is the length from an elbow to a fingertip or feet or paces and so on, uh, to try and have common ways of measuring things. Now, of course, they were slightly less precise because one person's, the size of one person's hand will be slightly different to the size of another person's. But at least it was a way of comparing and describing, uh, in this case, lengths. Now, you're going to invent your own measuring system using some of the parts of your body. Now, I'm going to give you three things that you're going to have to measure. Um, and they're, they're different length things. That's the clue. And before you do that, you're going to have to choose which parts of your body are you going to measure with. And you have to stick with the things that you cho choose to start off with. So your first job is this. Pause the video and choose which of your body parts, which three body parts will you choose to measure with these different length things. Write them down and only play the video when you've chosen them. Okay. And let's imagine the things you chose could have been, or the things I chose, I guess, were maybe a nail. I could use a nail, uh, my cubit, and a pace. And there are three things that I've selected to measure with. Now, I decided to go for something that was smaller and something that was a bit larger and something that was a bit larger still. So I can measure smaller things and larger things. Now, anyway, whatever you've chosen, don't use my examples, use your examples. You're going to measure these three things. So you need a longer pause of the video for this one. So go off and measure the height of a table, the length of a pencil, and the length of your widest room, the widest room that you're able to measure. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so that was probably quite a long pause that you had there. And what I'm quite interested in is like, for these different things, we have to think, well, which measure is, is it appropriate to measure in? So for the height of a table, I went for cubits. I thought that would be about right, because I could have a few cubits would be the height of a table. I thought nails were a little bit small to measure the height of the table. Whereas the length of a pencil I did go for in nails. I couldn't really measure that in cubits or paces, because it's less than one. I thought it much better to measure it in nails. Whereas the length of my widest room, well there I went for my biggest measurement, paces. Um, now to move on, I want to think about this. You're going to measure one of these three things that are in red using two of your measures. So which one will you choose? Just one of them and measure it in two of those measures. And which measures will you choose? Pause the video and, and do that. Okay, well, I wonder which things you chose. So um, for me, I, I, I thought, well, the length of a pencil, only really appropriate to measure that in my measurement system, in nails. Um, and I actually went for the length of my widest room, which I think I could measure in cubits and in paces. And I actually, I could work it out um, just by doing conversions as well. If I worked out how many cubits in a pace, then I actually wouldn't need to measure with my cubit again. I, I could just do a, a multiplication. Okay, so let's have a think about the conversions between the measurements that I chose. So I worked out about 39 nails is the same as a cubit. 2.4 cubits is about the same as a pace. So then I, I, um, I multiplied to work out that, and I did use a calculator for this one, I have to be honest, that one pace is about the same as 93.6 nails. Um, so this is your next task. What I want you to do is pause the video and for your units, um, what are the conversions? What, how many of one of the units is equivalent to how many of the other? See if you can work that out for some or all of your units that you have. Pause the video and have a go at that.
Okay, and I know. I wonder again. We we obviously can't talk about your one because I don't know what they were. But I wonder what those conversions were. Now this is where the real reflective thinking comes in. So improvements to my system. When I think about the measures that I chose, nails and cubits and paces, I like my choice about nails because then I could measure really small things. And cubits were quite useful as well um, because then I could measure, you know, things that were a, a bit larger. But actually one of the difficulties was that the, the unit of a cubit and the unit of a pace are quite similar. You won't really have many measurement systems where one of the units is only 2.4 larger than the other. Because really, I'd measure a lot of the same sized things in cubits and in paces. Now, let me tell you another thing that's slightly less than ideal about my system. It's very difficult to convert between my units. Um, because when one pace is 2.4 cubits, well, it, it would be much easier if it was three cubits to one pace, or five, or even ten, I guess, um, or 39 nails to one cubit. If, if I have to work out, well, seven cubits will be how many nails, it's quite a difficult calculation. Um, so that's another thing. If I was designing a system, I would want the conversions to be quite straightforward calculations to do. Now, this brings us on to almost where we started in this little sequence. The metric system is good because... So the metric system is our system that we have for length with millimetres and centimetres and metres and kilometres. The metric system is good because... What's good about our system then? What has this made you reflect on? Uh, pause the video. What, what's good about our metric system? Well, let me share some thoughts with you. Uh, reasons why I think it's quite useful and why it's adopted all the way around the world. In most countries around the world, use the metric system. Uh, the first thing is its accuracy. You, you know, when I've got a very small measures like millimetres and then centimetres and metres and they get increasingly large, I can measure with great accuracy. If, if the smallest unit I had to measure with was a nail, then I can't be as accurate measuring smaller things as I can with a metric system. And of course, everyone has the same understanding of the size of those measures. Another thing is I can kind of picture measures. Because when I've got a range of different sizes of measure, if I've got a very large item, I can use a large measurement and I can kind of imagine better how big it is. And a very small thing, it's much easier to imagine how big that is if I'm using millimetres and kilometres rather than, say, if I just had to stick to using metres. Now, there is another reason why our metric system is so brilliant. Let, let's compare it to a non-metric system as well. One mile equals 1,760 yards. One kilometre is 1,000 metres. Now, let's say if I was to say, well, how many, what, what is five miles in yards? That, I would say, is a much more difficult calculation than if I'm saying, well, five kilometres is how many metres? With our metric system, it's easier to make conversions between units. One of the reasons why it's so effective. Now, like I said on the video, the main task has been actually in the video. But if you want an extend, click on the blue link underneath the video. And this uh, is a great task. I like this one. Um, now, I have adapted their names. This is true. I've adapted the names of my children. But I have a daughter aged five called Lily and a daughter aged eight called Catherine. Now, I once, for a lesson that I was doing, I measured for all three of us our hand span. Uh, so the length between our thumb and our little finger. Our cubit length, the, the length from our elbow to the edge of our fingernail. And our head circumference, so right around our head. And one of the three of us has a hand span of 19 centimetres. One has a cubit of 25 centimetres. And one of us has a head circumference of 53 centimetres. Now your job is this, match the, the measurement to the correct person. So which of these measurements is for Lily? Which is for me? and which is for Catherine, and how do you know? Now, I'm not going to give you any clues about how you might work that out. Um, so that's for you to figure out, but you're going to find out who is who, um, or who has which measurement in tomorrow's video. So good luck with that. See if you can work it out. There are no answers for that reason. Um, I hope today's been really helpful, really thought-provoking. We're going to build on some of the things we've done today and see how it helps us to calculate with measures tomorrow, um, and I'll sure you'll be back for that.